All right, so as the title suggests, yes, I got rejected from my dream job. This was probably one of the best opportunities that could have been handed to me. And unfortunately, it slipped out of my hands. I'm gonna be talking about like what this opportunity pretty much entailed, what kind of job it was, what happened, how the interview process went. And then at the end of this, we'll talk about some of the ways that I look at rejection in the form of job interviews and how as self-taught devs, we should be handling them because rejection emails and getting no's really in anywhere in life, but more so in the development side of things, especially as self-taught devs, it can be very, very discouraging. And not only does it stop you in your tracks, but it could very much so stop you from pursuing this at all because you start to, in your mind, ask yourself, is this thing worth it? Should I even keep continue doing this? I'm never going to get a no. Like there's so many things that can wrap up in your mind. And there's a couple ways that I've learned how to deal with it and that have been very beneficial for me in order to keep moving and keep working hard. So this job opportunity that came up was like I said at the beginning, one of the best opportunities that could have been handed to me. This was a content creation job that had to do with development. The role was a developer relations engineer. If you guys don't know what DevRel is, it comes in the form of different names. So there's developer relations and there's developer advocacy and developer evangelism. All those different terms kind of wrap up into one single thing. And pretty much what you are doing for a company is you are creating content, whether that be in the form of blogs, videos, tutorials, documentation, podcasts, you name it, pretty much everything that I do now here on YouTube, on Instagram, on my podcast, Twitter, you are in a sense an influencer for the company. That's the way I like to look at it. You are an influencer. You influence other fellow developers who are looking for solutions or products that may be, you know, the answer to their problems. And you are now exposing them to the software and or other product that you work for within that company and exposing them to that in order for them to really like, you know, convert over and say, hey, this product looks viable for what we have going on. Let's sign up with them, yada, yada, yada. You guys kind of get the drift. And that was the role that was handed to me. I was essentially interviewing for a content creation role as a developer and, you know, the opportunities and the role essentially asked me to stream, make videos, go on blogs, go on podcasts and do all that, as well as going to conferences and talking with people. Since COVID is kind of a thing right now, you wouldn't be going out to conferences. You would be doing online conferences or recreating some form of that where we could host and talk with other fellow developers about a certain problem or a certain product and kind of just, you know, have a quote unquote fireside chat about that kind of thing in the form of a stream and or video. Now, if that doesn't sound exciting to you, then I don't know what does because that for me was like the dream. I could have been doing exactly what I'm doing now for you guys on YouTube, on Instagram, on all these other platforms, but now be paid for it. Hello, <laughs> I get to work anywhere I want to do the things I love to do on top of the thing that I already love doing, which is coding. Like that's, that's like a dream come true. And I really, really, really pushed for this thing to come to fruition. And I tried to absolutely kill it on those interviews, which I feel like I really, really did. But unfortunately through all the stages of the interview, I was rejected. And at the end of the day, they went with other candidates. I think they're still forming the team, but they decided not to roll with me. I was told that, you know, it was due to the experience levels and kind of the current circumstances that I am in as a developer, you know, not coming from a non-traditional background, not having a degree. I've really been only doing this thing for a year now, so I don't really have that much experience and I wasn't viable as a candidate. A week after the last step of the interview, I was told this through an email and it was not as shocking as I thought it was going to be. I have gone through plenty of rejection emails, plenty of no's, either through email, DMs, whatever it is, like you name it, I've I've heard it all. And I kind of expect it at this point. I go through interviews with no expectations, but I do go in with a will and a drive to absolutely kill it and do my very best no matter what. Even if I fully expect not to come out of that interview on top, I still give it my all no matter what, because I really, really, really wanna be 
in that role and doing that work or doing or being at that company. So now that brings me to the point of this video is how I deal with rejection and no's within the development scene. But uh, some of my tips that I think that you guys or some of you may be able to follow and take away from this video in order to deal with rejection because as self-taught developers or as developers who come from non-traditional backgrounds, rejections and no's are pretty, pretty common. And unfortunately, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is very, very demoralizing and can definitely stop a developer in their tracks and stop them from pursuing this thing if they still do really want it. With that in mind, the one thing you should definitely be aware of if you aren't already at this point is it happens a lot. Rejections and no's are going to be coming your way more so than you would like them to. It's definitely going to be uncomfortable, definitely going to be demoralizing, but you have to understand and be in the mindset that, you know, going into a job interview or going into some sort of role that you know that they are looking for people where they're coming from college, they have a degree, or they have already been in the industry for a certain amount of time and have experience, they're going to be looked at more so than us as developers who are still coming up in the scene, don't have experience, didn't go to college, don't have degrees, or didn't go to boot camps, you know, things like that. Even boot camps aren't even looked at as credible sometimes, depending on the company and or hiring manager. You know, there's so many different factors that play into it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of gatekeeping in the industry still when it comes to that. It's sad to see, but it's something that we still do have to deal with no matter what. It's not something we can control and or change at this moment. I wish we could. I wish we could ease up on the requirements that are needed for certain roles. You know, there are roles out there on LinkedIn that I've seen where they're asking for a junior UI developer, junior front end developer, but at the end of the day, they're asking for a developer who has had 10 years of experience using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Angular, Vue, React, Node, SQL, Mongo, but that's considered a junior still. That boggles my mind and I hate seeing those kinds of, you know, posts for jobs and job listings in general. But it's again, it's something we have to deal with and we have to be in the mindset that, you know, you're gonna apply for those jobs anyways, but more often than not, you're going to get turned away. Do not let that discourage you and do not let that stop you from applying anyways. You know, a lot of the people on Twitter or Instagram or anyone you interact with really who is in the job and is already been in the industry for a certain amount of time, they will tell you if you at least qualify for 50% of what that job listing is, apply anyways. You should not go into the mindset or the, the thinking that you need to hit every single marker that those job listings tell you. It's completely unreal for the most part as a self-taught developer. And if you haven't gotten your first gig yet, you're not going to hit that and you shouldn't strive to. Most of the learning is going to be done on the job because that's where the most experience comes from is working on practical and real projects in the real world where some someone is going to see it. There's going to be an end user using that product or there's going to be a client that utilizes this product that you make. That's where the bread and butter is and you need to realize that's where your real experience com comes from. Don't get me wrong, side projects and all those other things are definitely in play here, but that's not where the real experience is. The real experience is building tangible, practical projects. So that's one, fix the mindset. Fix the mindset that you are worth more than anything. Just because someone get, tells you no or rejects you, does not mean you need to quit this thing. It does not mean that you are not meant to be a developer. There is an abundance of opportunities here and you need to realize that you cannot be so narrow-minded that just because one person said no, that someone else isn't gonna say yes. Everyone, and I mean everyone watching this video needs to understand that if you are a self-taught developer, no's are going to be a majority of what we hear. We just need one yes, one single person to say yes for us to be able to get our foot in the door and then now be in the industry for however long we decide to be in it. As long as we get that one yes, we're now able to build things that we want to be building, be a part of a team that we want to be a part of, do things that we actually want to be doing and now you know, being able to go to other job listings, other companies and say, hey, I did X and Y for Z company, let me show you what I can do. And then you're now more credible than someone else who hasn't been in the industry yet. It's unfortunate as it sounds, but you know, that's the mindset you kind of have to go into is you gotta be hungry for this thing. 
someone tells you no and that makes me personally want to achieve it even more you know like me being rejected from this company put a chip on my shoulder i now want to prove that company wrong i want to prove that company that they made a terrible decision in not hiring me as far as content creation goes i am about to kill the amount of content that i'm about to put out just because they didn't hire me i am more driven now than ever to be creating content and to be providing value for all of you because i was told no and that's the mindset that you should have you should not be sulking you should not be you know depressed or worried that hey i did not get this job i got a rejection letter saying you know we are gonna go with other candidates go with the mindset of okay you want to go with other candidates that's fine let me show you what else i can do and let me show you why you made a terrible decision and that's not against the company that's not against whoever i was talking to that's for me to utilize i'm utilizing a no and refactoring it into a positive and just mental energy where I can now focus all my efforts in creating content and showing the hiring committee, showing whoever has the final decision that, hey, you should have brought me on. You know, you should have thought twice before saying no to me. And, you know, again, there's no cynicism behind that. There is no anger. I'm not angry that they said no. I'm happy they said no to me because now I get to prove my worth even more so. Through rejection, comes more will and more drive and that's what you should be focused on every single time you get a rejection letter and before you go on that tirade of putting that chip on your shoulder you should also go back and look into the interview process what other processes or things you can look at as far as feedback take that and improve on it through losses come learning opportunities and i can consider this a loss because a no and a rejection technically kind of is a loss learn what you can from the process is there something during the interview where you feel like you could have improved whether it was a soft skills technical skills if it's the soft side of things then focus on learning how to talk and be more personable or whatever feedback that you get back work on that you know that's something you need to improve on so that the next time you get an interview you can kill that aspect and improve on it for the next time so don't dwell on what was right here take what was right here take the bad say okay i wasn't good in the soft skill side of interviews they said i was for example super robotic and had no personality take that work on it in the behind the scenes move it over here now to the new interview put it in and then now see what they say see if they give you better feedback in terms of hey i like this guy this personality was great very very talkative he knew what he was talking about he was able to portray and you know explain a couple things in a nice and conceit way where i could understand it great you've improved on something look at it that way or if it was the technical side of things you know take that side out go in into you know platforms like hacker rank leak code whatever and practice your skills there hone in on your craft and move it on into the next form of the interview do not dwell on what was in the past those are controllables right the people who say no you can't control their decision in a form you can kind of influence them to say yes but if there is something lacking here, this is the thing you can control at this moment. Control what you can, fix it, improve it, move on to the next one. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat for as long as that cycle needs to go until you finally land that first gig and that first job as a developer. Because like I said, all you need is that one yes. That one yes is going to get you in and that one yes is going to now solidify all the hard work that you put in, all the perseverance and patience that you deployed. That's all you need as a developer. Remember, one single yes. You can get 80,000 no's, but all you need is one yes to get in and your foot's finally in the door. Remember that, do not give up. Just because you got rejected a couple times doesn't mean that there is someone out there in this world that is able to give you a chance and say yes. Keep improving. 80,000 no's means that you had 80,000 chances to improve yourself as a developer and as a person. That then will then transfer over to the one person that sees that transformation and progress and will give you that one yes. Remember that in your mindset. Remember that when you are on your journey. I for sure will. That is something that I'm deploying right now. I am in the process of potentially looking for other jobs or branching out more into the industry aside from the content creation. The content is going to be put out at a alarming rate, like this kid does not sleep kind of rate. Like I said, in the middle of this video, there's a chip on my shoulder now. That company is going to regret not hiring me. 
I will show them exactly why. And you guys will see that the quality of content and the amount of content that I can put out will be more than anything. So with that being said, hopefully this video helped you in some sort of way. I hoped it could reignite some fire. If you recently got rejected while looking for a job recently, remember that I am here with you. We are all here with you. There's a community of us self-taught devs that come up from the ground and we are able to lift each other up. So remember that you're not alone. This happens all the time. Keep powering through, keep pushing and keep working hard. Eventually the hard work pays off. So if you guys enjoyed it, hit the like button. Hit me down in the comments if you have any questions regarding anything that we talked about in this video, or if you have a question that you want me to address, hit me down there and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.